thank you for your coming. Um, it's a good opportunity to uh, talk to you guys here. Um, a little bit going over there. Um, it's a currently an active project in New Zealand. Um, we try to find out the best solution to solve it, the current issues for the Auckland traffic jump. Okay, um, two weeks later, I will be Europe, try to get um, another research outcome later on. Hopefully, I can get a chance to talk to you guys later. But here, we got a case study. We started with um, um, review. Yeah, we start with the review the current uh, repeat transmit system in Auckland. I'll give you some of a picture over here. Um, now, but before I start, I show you a piece of the opinions over there from the. Okay. As a President Trump. Okay, actually, he got some of a conversation or message regarding um, the airplane crash. Okay, now we look at that piece of paragraph over there, and then, okay, we can pick up so many different meanings for the whole airplane issue. First of all, we got that paragraph here. Okay. We're talking about the elements of design thinking, one of them. I'm not sure if one of you or some of you understand or come with a design school background, understand design thinking process. Anyone? Okay. Yeah, great. Now, it's a variable. Actually, it's really people need it. a product design, airplane, or source of functions. Can we need it? Okay. The second one. Actually, where's the technology we use it? Is it some technology? Should we use it in that particular solution? Or overuse? Or too much? And desirable. What actually mean? Easy to use. People understand why people need it, and once they got it, can they operate? Okay, come back to the whole lot here, and the president actually got a command on that. And basically, it's a partly we're talking about design thinking of the product design. Actually, we come with the overlapping over the whole things, three elements to make a conclusion. To make the design. Okay, now we got one by one for the Auckland issue. Designable. So, what actually New Zealander or Aucklander need for the transport tools? Or we currently what we have? The system. Oh, sorry. Okay. We currently have repeat transit network. Possibly most of you are using that. If you come from North Shore, you got a busway. Comes from here, right? It's quite convenient. And for my new cow, you got train, you got bus as well. But they got the busway as well, okay? So to make sure you transmit as fast as possible. But actually, only some of the main road or the railway station could link all together. Not everywhere. 
Okay. So, what are our expectations? For example, even if myself I live in North Shore, in the areas of Takapuna, but actually for my home, to um, the bus station, if I walk, I need to get at least 20 minutes. If it's raining, heavy raining, it's impossible. Okay, very difficult. Huh? So, it's very thinking about where we live, where we work. Okay, we got to repeat transmit network. But it's really help at the moment. How can we get ourselves to the station and get the bus or train to CBD areas and then get into our, our classroom or office? Okay. So all the spare time, not work, not studying, going to shopping, How can we get there? Now, it's a got a little bit review quickly, right? It's a current situation for the repeat transmit network. In uh, in the soft future, okay, could be that. Okay, on the north, we got a little bit extension for that, not much. Okay, um, and to the south. It's almost a touch of Waitago, Waitago now, right? Okay, now, it's our system. So, what's the relevant technology at the moment to help our design? Okay, if we found a sum of a solution here. Now, the government center actually setting up some of a conceptual framework over there and tell us now, we can use the ideas was that it's an intelligent transportation system, okay? Uh, EV is electric vehicles, okay? Within internet of things, or, okay, with, within ITS, okay? Now, e-scooter, <laughs> okay? Everyone know that, okay? I will got an introduction for that later on. It's a one by one. Now, intelligent transport system, okay, um, will be source of a very complicated system. It's not just for the lane transport, but also from the air to the sea, right? But actually, today we're talking about um, the lane transport. Okay, for the lane transport. And for the government sector, actually got a definition of that will be road vehicle technologies. We got, got three parts of it. One, we may call it, um, we may call it um, self driving. We be hot at the moment. And I will introduce to you later on. We um, start to test. Um, so got so many different names here. Okay, one of the self-driving is a very popular one. Driverless, okay. Sometimes no sense for that. But anyway, it's a what's the meanings. Um, at that moment, New Zealand haven't got a formal testing program approved yet. Now for California, yes, they test uh, more than 10 years now. Okay, more than 20 Google Car have been tested. Um, and crash some of them. Okay, um, but New Zealand haven't started yet, but we saw some of a beginning. Um, Connect car, Connect vehicles. So what different between um, the self-driving? Connect cars more look like, currently we use it all the data exchange between the vehicles, between the vehicles and the road. Okay, how can we do that? It's a communication protocols been there. Okay. In USA, some of the states already start setting up laws. If you got a registration for the car, you had to transmit your own data in real time. 
to make sure people can reach them in 100 meters. It's like your location, your speed, who you are. <laughs> okay, no privacy at all. Right? Okay, engine technologies. Um, so actually, in New Zealand, no commercialized that one yet. Okay, and electric car. We start. I can share with you some of the data. Now, it is from the Ministry of Transport. It's a quite new data. Um, and tell you how many EV actually in our country. You can see in Auckland, yeah, most of the EV is in Auckland, okay, if like the figures. And the second uh, to um, Wellington and Christchurch. But because of the population over there is not comparing with uh, Auckland, so we got another figures here uh, talking about a thousand population um, and how many EVs within. Okay, you can see, um, surprise me sometimes, and Auckland is not that top, <laughs> it's in Wellington. <laughs> okay, but it's the data, okay. Um, and also, you can see um, two types of EV actually we're talking about. And one is a packing hybrid. What actually mean? It's a, the old model for the electric car because we do not have a big battery pack. So we had to use the petrol engine to extend the range. Otherwise, you will stay on the motorway very often. Okay? So, but later on, people open the battery to be chargeable. It means that if you driving the distance per day is not far away, you will be able to charge only. The petrol engines are never to be turned on. It means that you use an electric car. But the problem is you always carrying the engine with a heavy one. So okay, there's some of a design issue. But here, got the blue one is a pure electric car. Alright? So it's a quite a lot at the moment. Right? Okay. So what type of cars actually we have? Electric model. Now the major one is a green. You can see Nissan Leaf. Um, okay, that one is a, a, yeah, a little bit yellow and is a used car. Is it New Zealand using that much used car? <laughs> okay, we created some of the problem, but it's okay. At least we got the electric car now on the road. <laughs> okay, and that one, um, yeah, um, registration. Uh, from the country, and basically, we can see from Japan as a dominant um, e scooter. <laughs> okay, everyone know that, right? From the campus, was everywhere. Okay, <laughs> and certainly stopped. Okay, and then because then they got a lot of problem, and now we got a new one coming in shortly, and only some of a particular distance, right? From um, the port to the CBD areas, I think it's only 1.1, I don't know. Um, but actually, have you seen that? Okay, you saw some of them, right? Okay, now we got a announcement for um, one more. Okay. Um, right. Um, it's the findings from the data I showed you before. Uh, I got a summary here. Um, okay, um, the self-driving car, some functions available in Auckland. You know, like the new model for the Tesla. Yes, you already got it, but you need to turn on that. Okay, but somebody told me no. They don't want. Otherwise, it will be quite danger. Okay, it's a some of a story, but of course we have. In the connect car, we're not commercialized yet in Auckland. Um, 
but we thought somebody um, around test, but they only want to test 5G connect. But basically, 5G is like the key technology to make the connected vehicles available because they had to be fast enough for the communications. Now, engine technology, and basically, uh, we got a limit number for the electric car. Uh, but the um, hydrogen is not yet. I know somebody testing that in the campus, like Unitec. I, they showed me before, um, but not commercialized anyway, yet. Okay, my recommendations at the moment to the government sector, um, based on design thinking, I share with you, but some of them is a little bit confidential message, but anyway, I just got the overview for that for you. Um, now, um, within the repeat transit network, um, we suppose we can do, we can use the up-to-date technology to setting up a link, enable people to use the repeat transit network, more efficiency. Okay, e-scooter could be one of them. Okay, but but. The first one already being stopped. Okay, we know the reason. Okay, so I show you what's the idea there. Like North Shore, currently we got one, two, three, four, five stations. Okay, how can people get in there on the morning? Can we provide the sheer vehicles, very small in size? And shear vehicles would be a good idea to reduce the car park requirement. For example, everyone didn't own a particular one, right? You park one by one, you do not need exit when you park it. When you pick up the car, you just swoop the outside one, okay? It means that at least one time save for the space for car parking. And the new design. Now we've got to connect the vehicles. We've got a very easy control for the auto car parking. You just push the button and okay, go away, and then they find a space to park. Right? So it's quite easy. We, we know some of the model already got that. You push the button, when you sit there, they can park the car for you. Right? OK. Um, a plant, oh, sorry. Um, OK, um, I'm not sure if I'm able to. OK, good. Um, it's a personal vehicles. And it's a connect car and also self-driving. OK? And actually, I just mentioned it. So everyone said there, you do not need a steering wheel. OK, you do not need that. If we really want to control it, usually a mobile phone. If you guys got interested in that, go to Google me, okay? With video, we got a lot of video there. Uh, my previous postgraduate students published a lot of video over there, like using their iPad to driving the car, okay? And the advantage for that, you can use the iPad from London to drive that particular car, okay? Doesn't matter, it had to be inside the car, right? And also, you can use that one to drive your car to the car parking areas. Okay, um, we're running out of time here, but I'll show you one more. It's a one of my students with you uh, before from uh, Dunedin campus. Oh, anyway, I was a professor from the Dunedin campus. <laughs> okay, yeah, we are the college before, but different campus, right? So I'll show you that one here. It's a school of engineering building, just uh, uh, in the front of the gate. Um, see? All the wheels, it's independent control. See, it's a very, very really big angle. Actually, you can turn around, OK? And you can see a big one. It's a video. You can look at my name over there. You can see that um, we got a 90 degrees, parallel parking. <laughs> and actually, quite easy design for that. And each wheel can come through the cloud directly. It means that 
the operation or the calculation, you not necessarily have to be local calculation. You can be over there, somewhere around, okay? Because the local computer not necessarily had to be that capable, not had to be that expensive, but something else over there, okay? It's a come with the IT department, okay? Um, my student actually came from different departments to so make the team, so everyone got a contribution separately. So the question, when you got design, when we got this design, um, we always ask the questions. Okay, how to support the, the new vehicles by the government sector? Okay, yep. One example is what actually the regulation currently is a fit into the requirement for that. For example, now the single passenger car, okay, it's impossible to get the on road registration at the moment. If we look at the website, you can know, right? So we need to change. We need to discuss. Okay. And ask the same question. Maybe different feelings. Maybe different expectations. If the question asked by Auckland does, so what's the question could be? And for the business operation, for example, you got a car share company, you got a bus company, you got a train company. So how can you operate it? For example, the bus company, they always complain that not rush hour, they always driving the bus, the empty bus somewhere around. Okay, why not encourage the people to take the bus rather than drive their own? How can we do that? Okay. And, okay, of course, ourselves, researchers or professional body. Now, now not just researchers, um, I also work for Engineering New Zealand. Okay, um, we got um, so many regulation or engineering st standard to make that available for all the design, all the operations. So what the questions could be asked from different angles. So once you collect all the questions from different group of stakeholders, and then you'll find a more better solution. Okay, just that. Um, sorry I can't open so many details there, but if you guys are interested in the end of the future, welcome to come to me. Okay, quite easy to get me over there. Okay, <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank you so much.